Hello and welcome to our talk with the title Establishing Clinical Decision Support for Virtual Molecular Tumor Boys. My name is Stefan Ziegler. I'm a medical informatics professional and PhD candidate and I'm also head of the Department for Knowledge Management at the Molit Institute. My fire experience reaches back to DSTU2. First of all, a small overview. The Molit Institute itself is located in Heilbronn in southern Germany. Uh, we are actually located within this tower that you see here. And uh, apart from the really nice view, we also have the clinics very close, just uh, uh, up a little hill up to the left. And uh, so the channel is really short towards the clinic. So what we do here at the Molit Institute? We provide a framework that consists of two main products. First of all, a software for virtual tumor boards. And secondly, an electronic questionnaire tool, which is called EQ. They both have in common that the complete data management is handled in the FHIR format. They offer interfaces to various uh, other sources, such as clinical information systems, external laboratories, but also local cancer registry documentation systems. Molecular tumor boards are emerging as the new standard of care in oncology, where before a single physician would review some clinical guidelines and come to a treatment decision, we now have many more factors such as omics data, lifestyle data, available knowledge, and also the combined knowledge of a molecular tumor board uh, where we can get to a treatment decision. And molecular tumor board preparation is still a very manual process. For example, external databases have to be queried by hand. Uh, additional case files have to be requested by phone. Clinical guidelines have to be reviewed and clinical trials, which are suited for the patient, have to be consulted. There are several sources for this. For example, the clinicaltrials.gov register, the clinical trials reg register in the EU, and on a German level, the German clinical trials register. All of this is very time consuming and not very efficient. So, to confront this problem, we established a pipeline to semantically annotate clinical trials. First, we queried an API and process it to a human readable format. In a second step, the database is being curated. And in a third, the second transformation step is executed and the transformated data is published in an interoperable API standard. So how does that translate to FHIR? Um, we are actually using the research study and the group resource. We are uh, implementing some search parameters on the condition and enrollment of the research study. And in an example query, it looks like this. Uh, so where we have uh, enrollment, which is uh, NCI coded, and the condition, which is ICD-10 German modification coded. In order to integrate the newly established FHIR model into the workflow, we are using the CDS hook specification. We are supporting the molecular tumor board preparation through CDS hooks by providing a CDS client within the V2 software, which, can, which communicates using CDS hooks triggers to our knowledge components. They consist of CDS services that can query knowledge databases and include decision models if necessary. They also can communicate to the EHR repository using the FHIR standard in order to get additional information. Finally, some CDS cards are given back to the user in an automatic manner within the workflow so that the decision making can be done more easily. 
And this is how a CVS card looks in practice in the V2 software. We have the parameters again that you know from before. We have indexation dates in order to be transparent to the user on when the data was last indexed and if it's worth uh, researching more about clinical trial options for this patient. Uh, then the suggested clinical trial itself is displayed with a title as well as a status and the intervention information um, as well as study sites where this clinical trial is taken, uh, taking place if it makes sense for the patient to be enrolled to this clinical trial. This component that you have just seen is actually an open source component based on the Stencil J, uh, JavaScript framework which works in all modern browser. It supports all your uh, fancy frameworks and is built with love by the Molit Institute. Um, yeah. The GitHub is down there and you can have actually a rendered example on the link below uh, for you to get into. But that's not everything. There are more components from the Molit team available. For example, the Genomics Reporting Viewer, which you can see here on the right, it displays genomic reporting based on the HL7 Genomics Implementation Guide and is also based on the same framework as the component mentioned before. My colleague Patrick Werner will give his talk in, with a little bit more detail about it in another session. Uh, it's also available at GitHub and a rendered example is also available under the link down below. To the lessons learned, um, we have got to know some clinical trial registers and we know that they are lacking some semantic depth. For example, it is not possible to query your, uh, your clinical trial by using ICD codes. It's not possible to query using, its no, using SNOMED codes. There is some uh, limited uh, possibility to query by uh, MESH terms. But then again, uh, there is no official mapping towards ICD or other terminologies from MESH terms. Fire extensibility is a big positive here. Um, we were able to implement our custom query on the research study resource with some custom, parameter, custom search parameters. And this was an overall very uh, positive experience. The CDS hooks specification as well is a very useful uh, and guiding structure to integrate uh, the information into the workflow itself. Uh, coming from these pure EHR examples, uh, we are now stepping a territory that is a little bit more specific uh, or a little bit different actually. And actually we also find, found some limitations there because the CDS spec was not, is not thought to be, uh, to be accommodating separate links for each suggestion. So we were actually forced to do it with a little workaround where we uh, implemented some markdown string uh, in order to accommodate all the information that we need in the label of the CDS cards. Future steps, yeah, we want to enable a completely fire-based trial management. Uh, it should be ideally web-based and it would save us uh, the second transformation step mentioned before. We also want to implement more parameters for our CDS service so that, for example, uh, genetic mutation is part of the query that is executed and the upcoming results are therefore more robust for the physician in his workflow. We want to implement feedback loops in order to uh, get to know some search results that are not wanted by the physician and make it better the next time. With this, I want to share you my contact information uh, in Twitter, via email and via the app uh, of the Dev Days in the Speakers Gallery. Now I want to thank you for your attention. Uh, I'm open for questions and I wish you a very pleasant Fire Dev Days 2020.
Thank you, Stefan. We will now proceed to the Q&A. Please make sure you type your questions in the question box in the, your control panel of Hoover. See if there is something already coming through. Okay, first question is about uh, my email via chat. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> One second. All right, so that's done already. Uh, the URL of the demonstration. Um, you probably mean the GitHub account of the Modit Institute. Um, and this we have over here. I mean, I think you will get uh, the slides as well afterwards, but. Uh, okay, the URL below the GitHub, one second. Mm. So, need to get into my, into my slides here. There you go. We have this for the reporting viewer and for the card viewer. Over there. There you go. Any questions regarding the uh, CDS standard, um, regarding CDS cards that we have used, or uh, did you in the audience actually use it already and have some uh, examples maybe that you want to share? That's also welcome, I guess. Um, yeah. Ah, yeah, okay, now I see some uh, Q&A parts here, okay. What tools were used for pipelines to curate and publish the database? Uh, so actually here we used uh, a Java backend. Um, we predefined our API call uh, to the platform of the clinical trials. And uh, we then um, transformed the API response, which was in the XML format, uh, onto uh, an Excel, actually an Excel format, um, doing this by a Java backend. And in the second step, the second transformation was uh, reading in this uh, Excel format as, again and creating the file resources um, automatically and uh, was putting it all in a transaction bundle directly on the server. I hope that uh, answers this question. Uh, okay, we have here one. Um, being not familiar to CDS hooks and specification, does that require a high level of integration for Java developer with Firebase knowledge? Um, I would say that um, it does not because the uh, resources that are provided by the uh, CDS hook specification are already quite good. Um, there is uh, automatically generated um, CDS hook server in, in Java uh, as a backend. 
uh, where you can just uh, define your own new CDS service that you want to uh, broadcast uh, or that you want to provide. And then uh, you have to make sure that from your front end or whatever you're using, you are sending a request just to that back end in order for you to get uh, CDS cards back actually. So I hope that's also answered with that. If not, uh, you can just comment again and uh, say that we, um, we should go over it again. Next question was about uh, if, you, if we had challenges using the research study resource. Um, yeah, as, we, as you have seen in the presentation, it was necessary to uh, modify or to extend a little bit uh, the base specification. Um, for now, we had uh, the uh, enrollment criteria and the condition was not provided by the uh, current iteration of the fire standard as a, a standard search parameter. Um, other than that, um, we, as we use a group resource as inclusion criteria for the, uh, for the clinical trial, um, that accommodated our uh, complexity for the moment, I have to say. So for the moment, challenges were there, but they were not uh, terribly uh, big, actually. Thank you for that question. Um, Yeah, and the next question aims towards uh, knowledge. Um, how are you creating the knowledge module in CDS hooks as you're dealing with clinical and genomic data? Um, so all this, um, all the magic uh, happens in the CDS services backend so far. And there we, we are uh, creating all the different uh, queries that uh, have to be made to the uh, research study server in order for us to get uh, the adequate resources uh, back to us, the adequate uh, clinical trials. Um, we are actually working on uh, uh, incrementing or uh, putting more uh, criteria to our, um, to our search query that we can send so that the uh, answers also get more robust. And you could think of, for example, uh, that we are now at the moment, we are filtering for a condition and a subtype, but then it's of course possible uh, with the work that has been done by the clinical genomics implementation guide group um, to, to consider some molecular data as well and say, for example, oh, we have a specific uh, genetic variant there. So is there maybe a study that is uh, just focusing or especially focusing on this type, kind of variant and therefore offer a more efficient filtering? So, but yes, good question again. Um, we have another one. It states, could you explain what issue or functional lags you meet with the fire search and the terminology lags nomad? Um, so yeah, uh, what SNOMED is, is a comprehensive uh, semantic codification for uh, almost all uh, contexts in healthcare. And um, since SNOMED is also consisting of a, a grammar that uh, can actually have composite, um, composite queries or definitions, so there are also the circumstances that can be queried could be way more complex. Um, that for the moment for us here in Germany is still a uh, sound of the future. We are still uh, getting our national license at the moment. Um, yeah, then there we have a similar question than before a little bit. Uh, what pipelines are used to curate and publish a database? Uh, we there use uh, the Java backend um, for the moment at least, yeah. Uh, we have one with one new reply. Thank you for your answer. Okay. Uh, hey, Stephen. Yeah, sorry. Um, looks like uh, the time's uh, run up. Um, All right. Okay, uh, delegates, please note that the uh, questions will still remain in the Q&A box and Stephen will answer them uh, via the Q&A feature in Hoover. Um, yeah, later on today. All right. Um, Thank you, Stephen, and all of the attendees. We are happy you were able to join us today. 
We hope you find this session useful and informative. We would like to know more about uh, your impressions. So please let us know what you thought about the presentation and rate it directly in the Hoover app. Thanks again for joining us and we will see you next time. Thanks, Stephen and delegates. Goodbye. Thanks. See you guys. Bye. Lloyd, you'll have to click uh, end session.